Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, it's Craig here again with uh, a kit review, like I promised, I say I haven't done any for quite a while and I've got quite a few to do but I thought I'd start off with this one which is the uh, rifle model of the uh, T34-122 which is basically the Egyptian 122mm self-propelled gun placed on the T34 chassis as you can see they've got a nice uh, Nice picture on the front, it's facing backwards. Obviously that's how it must have been uh, used in order to get to the position and turn it forward I suppose or it could have been fired from that position, I'll have to find out. And it's a Ryfield model and the kit number is 5013 and on the ends we have the same drawing as on the, on the, on the main box a lot of Japanese or Korean writing, whichever it is. And on one side here we have one colour variation, all MIG paints, but I, don't know, I always tend to use Tamiya more than anything else, or Tamiya, whichever you would pronounce it. So that's one colour call out, it doesn't give you any uh, what it is or what battalion it was attached to or anything like that. And on the other side we have some sort of CAD drawings or whatever you want to call them of the finished model. There's a couple of the uh, Things that you scan with your smartphones to take you to uh, whatever it takes you to. So it's an unusual looking thing, only for the T34 chassis with a big massive uh, casement or turret, it's actually a turret on top. Now there's nothing on the back of the box, it's empty. So without further ado, we shall uh, see what we've got in the box. So I did a quick look at when we did the Christmas reviews, but I said I haven't taken it out any plastic out of anything. So what we'll do is we'll go sprue by sprue as normal. I shall just take that out of there for now. And we'll go with the first sprue. With my knife. And we've got self-sealing bags or yeah we have self-sealing bags I think here. So there's no need for the knife. Sorry about the rustle. Uh, let's have a look what we've got first. Obviously, have the uh, the upper hole and the low and the uh, front glacis plate with the uh, transmission covers. On there, a bit of spare track. Obviously, we have. You know, we can either do with the photo etch or without the photo etch. I don't know what they are. Lots of small bits and pieces. The rear, if it's the rear of the tank, probably looks like the rear. Yeah, it is the rear of the T34. Uh, but the detail is uh, is typical Ryfield. Very nice indeed. The periscopes there inside there. It's a bit of the unclear, but uh, it's not a problem. Presume they're headlight covers or whatever. And then we have the two options. I presume one option is for the PE and one option is if you don't want to use the PE. I shall be using the PE. And we have the uh, the uh, machine gun, ball mounted machine gun. They've got a nice bit of texture on the. Let me just move the light up to there. That's better. A uh, nice bit of texture on the actual machine gun mount. And then we have uh, some spare track there, again which is nicely detailed, uh, there's no injection marks, and then on the rear, so again nice, nice again, obviously injection marks are in places where you're never going to see them, and I think they're the rear for the, uh, must be the use parts here, where well, my thumbs are, or fingers are, it's part of the uh, engine deck on the sides and then we have what looks like the top of the engine deck as well yeah there's the rest of the vents and there's the uh, the cover for the uh, for front uh, driver for the driver so is it yeah it looks like it's two piece yeah we've got the inside piece and the external piece a bit of texture on top of the uh, on top bit there Obviously we've got the, these are before the uh, driver's viewports, but obviously covered up with the ones that are going to slide up and slide down. 
generally speaking, yeah. Nice. Nice so far. So far, so good. Right, and then we'll get to the next one, which is a long sprue with an unusual, with the unusual shape, shape for it. The low hole is, you know, typical, nothing really much to say about the low hole, but it's cool, it's got workable suspension and torsion bars to go into it, which would be a nice, which is nice. I just wish I had that on the T34 for the, uh, the Stalingrad diagram, uh, Dio, but uh, I did make them work, but I only had rubber tracks. I should have waited and got some uh, workable ones, but that's nice detail on the side. And then we have the unusual shaped turret, which again has got nice detail. I'll be, so I believe all these are hatches. Uh, when they were firing the gun, they had all the hatches open. So they vented the, the turret, otherwise they'd be, uh, they'd be gassed out and they'd be red hot. So that's what I believe all these hatches were left open when they were firing. The ones at the backs as well. So some nice detail on that. Again, like I say, it's an unusual shape turret. Almost this where the gun goes. Right, that's that one. A little turret here, yeah, sorry. A little bag here, a little uh, resealable bag as well, with the uh, the gun mantlet, which is a soft rubber, which is quite nice. I don't know if the shape, I think the shape is uh, quite nice again. It's got some nice details. Even got the rivets on the actual bit of the uh, the mantlet. I do believe some people. I think I don't know who it was who said it, but even when you fasten this, you can't really um, maneuver the gun up or down. I don't think it would work properly, so you have to get into position and go from there. I presume, but I'll shall find out as we're building this when I get round to it. So that's a nice touch. I like that. I like that. And the next screw is wheels, wheels, and more wheels. There isn't that many wheels on a T34, but I think. We've got a separate two screws the same. Put one back in the box. Yeah, we've got. I think we've got uh, different setups of wheels. It said on the box. I think it did. And obviously, we have separate um, the tyres. So they're nice. They're nicely detailed. It's the uh, it's one set of wheels. Nice again, nice detail on the even at the back. Obviously, you got them uh, put together so you're really going to see nothing really, but still, the detail is there. And then we have a, another set of wheels which are the solid type again, nicely detailed. And the back again is fairly plain, but there again, you're not going to see that. I see they're all keyed, which is a good idea. But it's more on the these ones to be keyed more than the other ones, I'll presume, because uh, you're not really going to see the see through them ones. Yeah, so these are the tyre, which can be uh, damaged up and spray out, well, sprayed and damaged, or damaged and sprayed up before the. Uh, before adding to the uh, the wheel, it's got that nice, you know, that, what they normally have on the T34 and a lot of Russian tanks, the actual markings on the tyre, which is really nice again. They can be chipped up and damaged before you paint them, which uh, I'll probably do. So let's have a slurp of tea. We have a, another which we two identical screws, which is the track, a uh, lot of the low, lower running gear, uh, fuel drums, two identical tracks, type identical sprues. Uh, yep, yeah. and then we have the uh, nicely detailed again for the uh, sprocket. Well, it's sprocket the uh, wheels, return island and the uh, main front wheel. All nicely detailed again. And the suspension springs. 
lots of little bits and fine bits and pieces on the bottom there there's a couple of pieces here with the injection marks but that's on the back side so you're not going to see them and there again fuel drums are slide molded which is nice which is nice and they're actually soil on one end as well let me see if I can show you that you see the sealed on one end and so there's only one part to go on which is really nice and same with the smaller one as well on the rear they're nicely detailed the uh, the wheels again lovely really crisp typical Ryefield stuff and then we have the tracks which if you look at if you can't quite see that you've got the, uh, the sag built in well, there wasn't a lot of sag on a T34 but there was a little bit so that's at the top of the tracks and they're nicely detailed no ugly sink marks on the top there any I can see and none whatsoever on the uh, the reverse so that's that's uh, that's good let's clean up there's lots of little small pieces there there's tow hooks so, so the uh, eyes for the tow hook for the toy for the tow cable some parts and exhaust covers it's two different types by looking at that and then we have suspension arms I may be wrong about the workable suspension because I haven't seen this uh, well they didn't have torsion bars what am I about it's Christie suspension stupid boy but still probably might be workable we shall see when we build them and there's the springs which I showed you which are nicely detailed again so oh. That's that. And then we get. Oh, we've, got, we've got the uh, nice piece of uh, copper copper braid or wire for the tow cable. And we have a nice piece of PE with the engine covers. Looks like a few tie downs and things like that. And it's really nice and thin. Which is, which is nice. And it's actually made by Ryfield themselves. And then we've got the uh, looks like for the extra for the uh, ball mounted machine gun on the front. That looks like that's far to go around it. I would presume I could be wrong, but they say we have the engine covers and things like that on there, so we can pop that in into there. And then for the last main big bell well, that the last of the plastic it is fairly relatively straightforward kit, I would have presumed to build. But, uh, let me get into this front last one. There's always one that's always a bit more video to get in there, isn't it? All this sod block. It's like a single screw in this bag, in this bag. And we have that's obviously the lower of the turret, which has got a nice cast texture on the bottom as well, right round. Which is really quite nice. Main barrel is in two parts, which I thought would have been slide molded, but you can't have everything. But there again, it shouldn't take too much to uh, sand the seam out of that. To be perfectly honest, there's not much in there. Uh, part of the, uh, if it's like a mantlet as such, there, nice uh, details again. And we have storage boxes. Ammo boxes, looks like the horn, other little bits and pieces, the uh, mud flaps, other small bits and pieces again. Uh, I presume that's the rear hatch for the uh, the main turret, the turret, I think, or as it could be the uh, hatch for the uh, driver. Unsure. But there again, the nice detail, and we have two. Well, if it's not slide molded as such, but two uh, two nozzles, two of the uh, gun nozzles, mantlets, well, mantlets, gun nozzles at the end. I can't really tell what difference is, but I'll find out. There must be a difference. There's two of those, and that looks like part of the breech. Again, not 100% sure. 
plastic is nice there's no there's no there's I've seen no flash and everything is crisply molded and there's no ugly injection marks where they shouldn't be which is 100 percent bonus all the time when you things like that but it looks like it looks like a straightforward forward build you know most t34 chassis are, are uh, fairly straightforward unless it's a dragon kit right let's have a look at the uh, instruction sheet and rifle usually make a nice instruction sheet and there again we have the uh, main cover again and it'll give the uh, assembly icons optional cement do not cement insert instant cement obviously super glue bend apply decals be careful remove open all and make make two or make four or make six and then we have the sprue map to start with which we've just gone all through which is all nicely laid out again and clear and they're actually, they're actually numbered uh, yep they're actually numbered as well on the sprue for you uh, and as we start with the lower hull again which is the usual sort of T34 layout with the Christie suspension we'll have to see if it is workable once it's say about the blue there's something about blue does it make ah right you see yeah, yeah. Typically, yeah, make, make, make three, make three, yeah, because you have to make sure you're in the right way. So you've got A, C, A, A, and then you've got B, B, D, B. So make sure they're going the right way. And then we the transmission cover on the front. And a couple little bits and pieces first on the sub, sub assembly and then onto the main hole. Nice clear paper, it's nice, it's almost not, it's like a. Uh, a silk paper, you know what I mean, like a silk finish and then we start to assemble the wheels depending on which variety, variety, which which ones you want to make the plan A off ro of road wheels and the plan B of road wheels so I was giving you the options, I'll probably do the top ones with like a spider effect, like try to do like the, uh, the Russian wheels on that so we'll get to that and then we are they polycaps? No, they're not polycaps. But I won't be putting them on at, at this point. I won't be uh, putting them on at all. I'll have them all ready to go, but I won't be going on. And same with the tracks again. I won't be putting the tracks on. It's fairly straightforward again. It's just telling you exactly where what parts go where. I said I won't be. I won't be doing. I'll be skipping there. Uh, that part three and four for now and then we have a few things to drill out it says here please drill out if you choose to assemble the parts E21 and E24 and E25 on page 11 or please drill holes if you choose assembly of parts 20, 23, E26 on page 11 so we'll have to look at that when we get nearer the time but, uh, and then we've building up the, uh, the driver's hatch with the covers and one thing and another and the ball mounted machine gun very straightforward and a couple of little bits and pieces on there again nothing too bad and then again we'll be putting some more front parts on this I won't be putting that spare track on at that time all the rest I'll put on like the, uh, the lights and things like horn and whatever and the pass for the main for the engine deck, but I won't be putting the saw on at that point either. And then we're building another subsection for the uh, for the rear for the engine for the engine covers again, and then they're positioned on. Same with the uh, there's gonna be options here. Yeah, we've got an option of two different kinds of um, wood flaps, wood flaps, or wood flaps. <laughs> Can't even remember what they're called, terrible, I man. Cold getting old, but you know what I mean. You know what they are. And then we obviously start to assemble the uh, field drums, and that's what the straps are for the PE straps are for the field drums, uh, which are then placed onto there. So that's fairly straightforward. Muck guards. Oh yeah, getting old. And there we are, and again, there's another. Putting the other on the other side, the other and uh, field drum, and then we're starting on the rear. So we have two field drums in the straps for the uh, other field drums, and there's a PE again, 
for the is two of these parts here which we see on the P which is the brackets to all the small drums onto which we can see there in the uh, blown up little part where the fuel drums made that's two of those and obviously then they're mounted onto the rear hatch with the, the exhaust and some little bits and pieces in the main uh, cover again with a little grab handle and then we're on with the engine cover with the PE or engine cover without PE I presume and then there's more C45 I think that's part of the uh, is it let me think little things for the tracks to hold on to external tracks spare tracks whatever you call them it's quite bit yeah yeah, it's the alternative part here. Okay, it's a fairly straightforward build. Fairly straightforward. Well, the, the lower hull probably will be. I don't know about the, uh, the turret, and there's options again. So, have to make sure we make three. Obviously, if you're putting the spare tracks on this side, or you're putting the um, ammo case, you know cases to keep all their uh, bits and bobs in this gives you different variations I have to check which one I want to build and then again adding an ammunition box by the looks of it on top of there and then some more storage boxes onto the other side as well there again you've got the alternative you can either put one or the other we'll see when we get to neither the either build and study the Study it. Just fine piece of paper, and then we're starting the uh, turret. Like I say, I put I usually, like I say, I always, Sam, I always put the uh, if it's a two-piece barrel. I always put that together, probably the first thing, and let that set up as well. So let me just check that. Yep, F six times two. Uh, something goes on the end of the muzzle, on the end of the muzzle now. Not too sure what that is though, but we'll find out. And we're starting to build a bit of the breech. Yeah, fairly straightforward, nothing too, too overtaxing. And there's a couple of sub builds for the breech as well, which I then added. Again, added again. More sub, sub assemblies again. This is for the actual. You know, it moves the gun up and down, I'm presumably from side to side. Well, no, because the turret moves, doesn't it? It's up and down. And there again, there's a few parts to be built and added to that. So this is probably the most demanding part, I would have thought, is the uh, is the turret and building it up. And then once you've got the main gun barrel done, well, let me take it to the bottom of the uh, lower, lower turret. And then we start on the top turret, start and building all that up with the hatches and vents and polyscope covers, little aerial there, a few clasps. And we can see here when the barrel is through the mantle, it is strong, it needs to be pushed out strongly. I see, right. Okay. Then we've got some periscopes to go in there, and I was wrong that P part is for part of the gun mantlet, which goes right over the main gun and right round to the uh, that rubber part. So we'll, we'll know more as, as we build it, as we build it, we'll know more. And then basically attaching the upper hull and the turret together, and a few little sub assemblies there with the gun crutch, uh, mug guard again, give you a different two choices. Is it not? Just the one choice this time. And the tow cable. And that's the actual build. And then we got onto the uh, colour collars, which is nice again, nice colour paper. And we got both views, both sides, back and front, and from above. So we have that one, is the. Still doesn't give me the. No. It doesn't tell me where it's for, it just says weathering steps for our more products. It doesn't give me anything about the unit it was in or anything. So that's one. And then we have another one again. Same again, there's no mention of uh, any unit. That's a slightly different camo pattern, a bit uh, lighter. 
and then we have one that's just basically sand yellow and there's no off look into this there's no markings on here at all of any description no decals to be used never, so I never really noticed actually to be honest but the kit itself looks really really nice it really does look nice fairly straightforward build so that'll be uh, one of the builds up and coming I say I'm going to start the whippet today which I promised Joe from Joe's Model Kits I'd start today so I'd like to say thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to view this small unboxing I probably will start this one um, not 100% sure but I probably will start this after I've done the whippet but don't hold your breath uh, so I say thank you to all my subscribers new and old and yeah I, uh, I appreciate all the, the comments that you give me uh, and it, any help would be appreciated if you know if you, if you think I could do something different or uh, better or you do it a different way just tell me you know, I can have a look and see if I can uh, do it so this is Greg signing off and we'll see you very very soon with the uh, build log for the Whippet.